Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about the IC705. There's some good news, there's some less good news, and then we're going to debunk a lot of the hater comments we've seen on the previous videos I've published. So, stick with me, and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems... This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign Mary. So I guess the best thing to do is give you the less good news first. Because of the ongoing global pandemic, the ICOM IC705 has been officially delayed. This information is based on a post I saw on Instagram from ICOM UK. The post said, Production delay for the ICOM IC705 QRP SDR transceiver. We have just had a notification from our production team that the much anticipated IC705 QRP SDR transceiver, scheduled to be released this spring, will be pushed back to later in the year. The post goes on to say, the reason for this is that one of the parts related to its manufacturer has been delayed due to the recent coronavirus outbreak. We are sorry to share this disappointing news, and as soon as we have more information, we will post it on our website and social media pages. So if we're keeping it real, this is definitely a bummer, but it's not a deal breaker. Anyway, if this goes on long enough, I think it'll be easier to get an IC705 than it will be to get toilet paper. Alright, moving on. By far, one of the biggest complaints I've received on the channel was a lack of an internal antenna tuner. Now, I normally don't give haters a platform, but this guy was so polite about it that uh, I thought to go ahead and publish his comment. Now, what is absolutely amazing about the IC705 is the amount of passion it's brought out in the amateur radio community. Now, once again, keeping it real, just so you don't think I'm a fanboy, I also wish this radio had an internal antenna tuner. But since I'm primarily a digital modes operator, if I had to choose between having the internal audio interface or an antenna tuner, I'd choose the interface. There is far greater value for me having a one-wire interface for rig control and audio than an internal antenna tuner. I also wouldn't like to carry around an audio interface which is half the size of the radio. Now, as far as antenna options, we'll get to that in a second, but first, I should remind you, the Yaesu FT817 and the Yaesu FT818 doesn't have an internal antenna tuner. Yet, the first, second, and third generations of these radios are iconic in our community. Now, as far as not having an internal antenna tuner, it seems that many of us have forgotten the idea of using a resonant antenna. I also have radios like the 817, the 818, and the 891. Neither of them have an internal antenna tuner. When I'm not able to carry an antenna tuner with me, I usually carry the Super Antenna MP1. I usually use the MP1 with a longer than normal vertical whip, making it a near lossless quarter wave vertical for portable ops. Now another one of my favorite antennas to use is the magnetic loop. This is my P-loop from Chameleon Antenna. I also have another magnetic loop from Chameleon, which is the F-loop plus. Magnetic loop antennas don't need a tuner because they have their tuner built in. Another antenna option for the IC705 is a linked dipole like this one from Pactenna. Linked dipoles are multiband dipoles which are easy to switch over from one band to the other. Another option is the random wire infit like the MCOM3 portable from Chameleon Antenna. When properly designed and built, random wire infeds present a low SWR across multiple HF bands. It's also important not to forget the half-wave infed antenna, which is iconic for the portable operator. Finally, there's the broadband terminated dipole. We can find them commercially or DIY projects like those on hflink.net. I think we're also going to build a lightweight portable version of a terminated dipole for the channel. So another important topic we need to discuss is power options for the IC705. So as we already know, the IC705 has an internal battery which allows 5 watts output. It also has a DC input which will charge that internal battery while plugged in as well as powering the radio. 
It also has something not found on any of the other portable radios on the market, not Elecraft, not Yezu, not Zygu, and that's the ability to universally charge this radio through a USB port. Now, since the year it was released, I've carried the Yezu FT817 around the world on my travels. So one of my complaints on the Yezu FT817 and 818 is a lack of a rapid charger. In practice, this makes the internal batteries pretty useless and forces us to use an external battery pack. Keeping it real, the Yezu FT818 is not alone in its charging design flaw. The Elecraft KX2 can't be charged in the field. Its battery can only be charged with a smart charger. What this really means is these radios are designed to be charged at home, used out in the field, and then recharged again at home. The fact that ICOM has given us multiple charging and powering options is reason enough already for the portable field radio operator. Especially one who's going to go out into the field and stay out in the field for extended field communications. So let me show you the two different options I've come up with to power this radio in the field. This is the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max. I'm not sure which one is correct. This is a solar panel with embedded batteries or a power bank with an embedded solar panel and the ability to recharge itself. Regardless of our perspective, it's lightweight, extremely portable and has the ability to recharge itself. Naturally, it can power the ICOM IC705 as well. As far as outputs, it has two USB outputs and a single 12 volt output we can draw 5 amps from. This is going to be my primary power supply for the ICOM IC705. My second portable power option is a 5 amp hour or 64 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack based on A123 cells. We've actually built something similar on the channel already before. In the first version I used a 5 amp hour Guinness on charge controller but now I'm using a Buddy Pole Power Mini with A123 lithium iron phosphate cells. There's nothing wrong with the Guinness on controller, but I want to have the USB outputs that are already embedded on the Buddy Pole Power Mini. So I'll package everything up into a nice portable Molly pouch, then I'll choose the right power film panel to power this battery storage. I'll do a standalone video about this portable power solution on the channel since it can power the 705 or any other low power radio. So now let's talk about some of the comments coming from Elecraft owners. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is a lot of emotions and passions being tossed around since the announcement about the IC705. Now I had to delete a lot of the comments because they simply weren't family friendly. But again, what's clear is people are extremely passionate about their radios. But let's go into why I never pulled the trigger on the Elecraft KX2 or KX3. The KX2 can't be charged in the field. If you want sustained field communications, for example, hiking the entire Appalachian Trail with the KX2, you can't charge it while you're out in the field. So for the most part, we would use an external battery pack for it for extended field communications. Also, if I'm working data comms with the KX2, there's no one wire interface for both audio and rig control. So operating data modes becomes a lot more difficult in the field. Now for comparing it to the 705, it also doesn't have two meters and 70 centimeters. That's not really a big deal since like my FT891, I simply carry a second handheld radio with those capabilities. Now where the KX2 shines is with its low current draw on receive. For my type of operating, the KX3 was more interesting, but it lacked lithium battery support. The KX3 also lacks the single USB wire for both audio and rig control. But I guess the real deal breaker for me was having to pay extra for things which I considered part of the radio. Uh, for example, the antenna tuner, the microphone, additional bands, and so on. Perhaps some of you will add up the cost of a KX2 with all the bells and whistles and the KX3 with all the bells and whistles itemized and leave it as a comment in this video. We can then compare that to the expected price of the IC705 which comes with all of these features built in. 
Anyway, I'm not an Nellicraft hater. I think they're excellent radios if you're operating CW or phone. The KX2 and KX3, just like the Yaesu FT818, they all have their strong points. And as we're debating about whether the 705 is actually innovative or not, I have a feeling other ham radio manufacturers are going to be trying to best what the IC705 has brought to the community. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think, whether you agree, you disagree, or if there's something I haven't actually considered. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.